of the businesses flooded here 11 days ago are still closed. The amount of recovery work there is to do here is vast. And to be fair to the council, they have engineers, finance and housing officers out there trying to assist. But as its leader, Andrew Morgan, put it to me yesterday, the multi-million pound repair operation is the easy part. Rebuilding lives poses the biggest challenge. And as we've witnessed day in, day out here, I have to say it is very hard to overstate the amount of harm psychologically this is causing, and importantly, in already disadvantaged communities. They are thought to number more than a thousand in Bronva Kanantav alone. Their homes flooded, lives in upheaval. Young, old, fatigued by rain and in need. Centres like this now facilitating the council's initial £500 per home emergency payments and more. The crisis is far from over. The crisis has just begun. Some people have got no heating in their houses. They're still living upstairs. This is just the beginning. What have you lost? Electric beds, sofas, washing machine, dishwasher. Norma Jones, here with her daughter Lisa, is one of the few left in her street in Pentra. Amen! The flooding's so bad it's now mostly carless and eerily quiet. But for the sound of sweeping and dumping. So you're now living upstairs? Yeah. And it's a pain, bro. It's a real pain. Norma, who has arthritis, clambers breathlessly up the stairs. They had no insurance for the damage below. So you've got your bedroom here. This is the bedroom, yeah. Food over there. So that's a dog food, crisps and conflicts, and then I need it. And then I got a little room around by there then, which has got... Her husband, David, is registered blind. They've rejected offers to relocate, fearful of losing this home. That's not going to dry. It's, it's drying, drying it is. but it's not drying fast enough. But the unrelenting pressure of getting it fixed, with the help of their children, is proving too much. <laughs> They're gonna pick the floor up. They're gonna pick the bathroom floor up. <laughs> we borrowed the fridge. The cupboard's gonna go. The washing machine. It's working, but I don't know how. You know, we're making a noise. Our if centrating is working, we had the boiler people down. And because my shower's not working, and he said the boiler's okay, but now that boiler started to go funny, and I was making funny noises. I've cleaned the last three days, I've been in the bathroom, cleaning the bathroom. I'm too old to go and start all over again, and you know, I just don't know too old. Too old were some of the bridges here for the ravages of the last storm. A staggering nine, we're told, may have to be rebuilt. And as the council leader shows me, the Lido still being drained of mud. Some of the pipework has ruptured through the damage. Only now is a basic picture of the wider damage emerging. What's also beginning to emerge among so many of the communities affected here is an early indication of just how many people have no insurance cover to fall back on. In one street, nearly half are uninsured, one community worker told us. Oh, you got the uh, you got the postcodes, haven't you? How many people do we need them, though? Oh, I'll take them all down there. All of them? Yeah. We're at another centre, buzzing with volunteers in Pontypridd, rammed with donations, and all witnessing the hardships firsthand. The fact that they haven't got insurance, they're on benefits that are low incomes. Even families that are working on low incomes, where they've got no insurance, they couldn't afford to take out insurance on their property because they're, they're struggling day to day as it is. Further south in Nantgaru, the storm is costing businesses dearly, like this cake decorating and model making business, one of several here uninsured for flood damage. At this point, we estimate we think we've lost in the region of three to four hundred thousand pounds. We have no insurance, um, so we're, we're on our own. It's, uh, it's 15 years worth of investment um, gone in, in one day. <laughs> Among the 30 jobs he's trying to save, this 23-year-old's, whose home was flooded too, and whose patience with the authorities like Steve's is rapidly running out. My biggest worry 
is that Steve is going to move the place of the business because he's not going to be able to have insurance here. And then I'm going to be stuck because obviously I don't have a car anymore because that's gone with the floods. And now I'm going to be stuck without a job trying to fix up my house with no money and just waiting for the flood to happen again to wipe out all of my hard work again. There's a little boy in our, in our street. As he was being taken onto the boat, he was, they had to leave his parents behind. And he was crying and screaming, but mummy, are you going to die? That little boy is going to grow up with that memory, probably been his first memory. Sorry. Like, my sister already has an anxiety disorder. There's no counsellors come in. There's no one saying, oh, we'll, we'll set up a support group. Nothing outside. The First Minister of Wales has told us counselling services are available through a helpline. Others want to know what happens when that initial emergency funding runs out. Well, what they will get now will be the longer term help that we will mobilise with our colleagues uh, in the field, working with the UK government as well. But how much money might that be? That's what families would like to know. Yeah, well, I think families understand that it's just not possible because they themselves will not know how much money they will need and it will vary from household to household. But First Minister, they need some assurances now. What they need, I think what they will understand they need, is they need immediate help which is being mobilised for them and they need assurances that public services in Wales, including the Welsh Government, will be there with them over the long haul we are able to give them that assurance. And for so many here as elsewhere, traumatised and vulnerable, it will indeed be a long haul, bewildered by the magnitude of the challenges ahead, and all the time terrified of it happening again.